Did you ever stop and wonder if you could be related to everyone with your last name? Just think if you're a Lincoln, how you'd be congratulated if Honest Abe were someone you could claim. To clear up any mystery, just check your family history. Genealogy is the name of the game. Now some ancestors you'll find you want to hide. But most of them will fill your heart with pride. Oh, your family tree, your family tree. Check your genealogy, find who was who and how who came to be. On your family, 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 family tree. Welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. Today we have four fantastic guests representing the Genealogy Wolves to deliver a fascinating show about names, ranging from names that may have been common in the 1901-1911 census and are not so common now, to names that were common 100 years ago and maybe are not so common these days. First on the show we have Lucas. Can you tell me about the waves of invasion and the boys' names which were introduced into Ireland? Few people know just how many waves of invasion Ireland has had. Each new culture arriving has added to the number of names used on the island. Names did not come over one at a time, but as a group with these invading, invading cultures. According to our earliest legends in the ancient history tome on Laura Goblin Aheron, the Book of Invasions, the fearsome Fermorian people were called strange names like Balor and Mork. Yes, really. But also names like Elatha, which sounds almost familiar. We also find names like Finton in these earliest of legends. The mythic first humans of Ireland were led by gods like Bridget, mother of fame, a name that still survives today with different connotations. Saint Bridget would have herself been named after this mother god of the Irish. More historical accounts exist of Irish high kings in the annals of Ulster, and here we see names that we all know well. Khan, Khan Caird Cathach, Khan of the Hundred Battles, father of the O'Neills of Ulster, and the Connachta dynasty of Connacht. He was husband to a Spanish princess. No, no wonder the name is so common now with a legend like that. Connor, Niall, Donal, Dermot, all these names we see often. We see kings named Fieca and Art, which are fairly rare today, and Lugaird, which is even more rare. The Viking invaders were concentrated in coastal cities and demonized by everyone else. So their names did not have much lasting power, but Arthur, which is still popular in Limerick, actually has its origins from the Scandinavian name Arthur, A-R-T-U-R, meaning Thor's eagle. The Normans, who came to Ireland, who we know were Frenchified Vikings, actually settled in Wales, mostly, before coming to Ireland. Not so much England, as is commonly believed, though they were at first loyal to their Anglo-Norman brothers. They brought over the Welsh spelling of Celtic names, like Bernard, David, Stephen, Ewan, and Owen, along with the Norman names like Albert, Adam, Walter, William, Roger, Robert, Hugh and Henry, and our very own Nicholas. But the biggest influence on Irish names since the Celts landed was the Catholic Church. Children were named after saints like Anthony or Patrick, the apostles, especially the evangelists, as well as Joseph and Mary, of course. During the early, early Gaelic revival of the 1800s, the GAA founders, or Irish language poets, even the seven signatories used mostly English spellings of their names. It was a very slow change toward Irish language names as Irish nationalism surged during the War of Independence and later. In the last decade or two, these Christian names have been waning in popularity, though still very common. Uh, this is due to the fact that people are less religious and because people often don't want a name that's too common. Back to you, Thank Nick. You Thank you for that, Lucas. Next, we have Keen. 
Certain boys' names have remained popular throughout the years in Ireland. Can you tell me some of these names and where they've come from? Many popular names in Ireland throughout the centuries include Michael, James, Patrick and John, which originated from the Bible. The name Michael was anglicised from the Hebrew name Michael. Michael can be translated to mean who is like God. In the New Testament, Michael is the leader of the heavenly host that defeats Satan. In Christianity, Michael is the patron saint of soldiers, grocers and sickness. The traditional popularity of the name is highlighted in the Bible as it is used for 10 different characters. The name Michael first came to Britain, thus Ireland, in the 12th century. But as time went on, Michael's longevity came from the string of Irish place names, such as Skellig Michael in County Kerry, named after the archangel St. Michael, and of famous Irish people such as revolutionary Michael Collins, current president Michael D. Higgins, and current Taoiseach Michal Martin. Michal is an abbreviate, Irish abbreviation of the name Michael. The name James comes from the Hebrew word to heal. The Hebrew abbreviation of James was Yaakov. It became popular in Western Europe thanks to St. James, whose shrine in Santiago de Compostela in northwestern Spain became a really popular pilgrimage spot for British people during the Middle Ages. James was once a unisex name, with the males being called Jem and the females being called Gemma. The biggest boost was during the Jacobite War when King James II was deposed in 1688 as Jacobites often named their sons James in England and Ireland. According to the 1911 census, 7.1% of all men in Ireland were named James. The Irish abbreviation is Seamus. It has remained one of the UK's top boys' names for 500 years and has been in the top 10 most popular names in the US since the 1880s. This leads to the question, why is James so popular? Six American presidents have shared the name, 13 kings across Scotland and England, and it has also been used in international books such as J. Gatsby, real name James Gatz, from the Great Gatsby, in films such as James Bond, and famous Irish people include James Connolly, who was one of the leaders of the 1916 Easter Rising. The name Patrick comes from the Latin language, meaning nobleman. It is used in many European languages stemming from English to Norwegian. It was adopted in the fifth century by St. Patrick, originally named Sukas. He is regarded as Ireland's patron saint and is regarded as with bringing Christianity to Ireland. Many people in Europe called their children Patrick in honour of our patron saint in the Middle Ages due to pilgrimages, but the name was not used in Ireland until the 1600s as the name was considered too sacred on par with Jesus. The Irish abbreviation of Patrick is Padraig. Famous Patricks or Padraigs include revolutionary Patrick Pierce, who later Gaelicised his name to Padraig, and former president of Ireland, Patrick Hillary. Last but not least, the most popular boy's name in Ireland from the early 1900s to the mid 20th century was John. In the 1901 census, there were 348,550 Johns in Ireland. John is used in many European languages and is also common in biblical languages. It is derived from the Hebrew word to be gracious. The name owes its popularity to two New Testament characters, John the Baptist and the Apostle John, who is regarded as the author of the fourth gospel. 
John became a popular name in Western Europe after the First Crusade. John was the most popular name in England for 700 years until the 20th century and the most popular name in the USA until 1923. After the 1960s, the short abbreviation for John, Jack, became the most popular baby boy name in Ireland and still holds the rank to this present day. The Irish abbreviation is Sean, the Scottish abbreviation is Ian, and the Welsh abbreviation is Evan. Famous Johns include former US President John F. Kennedy and Pope John Paul II. Thank you for that insight, Kian. Next on the show, we have Laura. Uh, what are some examples of boys' first names that might be common today, but are either rare or non-existent in the 1901 and 1911 census? Nobody is certain when Donica emerged as a popular name, but it is rare in the 1901 census. Unfortunately, the 1891 census did not survive to give us more in-depth knowledge of the name. Don and Donica refers to the color brown and Ka meaning chief. The name Donica typically translates to brown haired warrior. Donica is a famous name given to High Kings of Ireland, the most famous being Brian Brew's son, Duncan McBreen, who served as High King of Ireland until his death in 1064. There are many variations of the name Donica, however, D O N N A C H A is generally accepted as the most common. However, a variant of the name spelled with a D H at the end could be seen six times on the 1911 census. The name Donica began to be seen commonly in rise in popularity around the 70s and 80s in Ireland. The anglicised version of Donica is Dennis, which was very popular in Ireland in the early 1900s, appearing on the 1901 census over 23,000 times. In contrast, the name Donica, as of 2019, ranks as the 56th most popular baby boy name in Ireland, as recorded in the Central Statistics offices, while Dennis was not even in the top 100. Now I want to tell you about another common name, Oren. Oren is a name that today is common and well known amongst Irish people. However, has no traces in any census before and including the 1911 census. Oren is a Gaelic adaptation of the name of the patron saint Oren, spelled O-R-A-N, as opposed to the common Gaelic spelling O-D-H-R-A-N. While there is no trace of the Irish spelling of Oren on any census, there are two people who show up under the anglicised spelling in both 1901 and 1911. The name Oren comes from the Irish meaning of little green pale one. In 2019, Oren was ranked the 93rd most common Irish baby boy name by the Central Statistics offices. Moving on to the name Fergal. Fergal is another example of a common Irish name in modern times. However, it was extremely rare and uncommon in the early 1900s, with only three people being registered under the name in 1901 and two in 1911. The name Fergal was at its most common with babies born in the 60s and 70s. The meaning of the name Fergal comes from the words brave, courageous and valorous. Perhaps the most famous Fergal of all time is Fergal Mac Neil Doon, a High King of Ireland who died in December of the year 722. However, while the name Fergal was incredibly rare in the 1901 and 1911 census, a variation of the name Fergus was quite common, with well over 150 being registered under the name in both 1901 and 1911 census. Nowadays, everybody knows Akeen. However, 100 years ago, that was not the case. Akeen is one of the most popular Irish names contemporarily, with it being the eighth most popular boys name in 2003 and the 14th most popular boys name in 2015, according to the Central Statistics offices. The name Keen can mean ancient or enduring in Gaelic languages. Keen was also the name of an important figure in Celtic mythology, Keen being the physician to a day and the father of Lug. Keen is thought to have, ang to have two anglicised forms, Keen and Kyan. Notably here is the fact that Kyan is thought to have derived from the name Kyanna. While Keen is quite popular in the modern day, in 1901 and 1911, nobody existed with the name Keen, spelled with a C or using the anglicised version, which is spelled with a K. However, one male in 1901 and two females in 1911 were spelled K-Y-A-N. Other names that are thought to be linked to Keen are Keenan and Keenan. Now let's talk about the name Fionn. Fionn is another of the most popular names in Ireland contemporarily, ranking 14th most popular in 2017 and 2018 in the Central Statistics offices. Fionn means fair-haired or white in Gaelic languages. 
The name Fionn is also held by a figure in Celtic mythology, that being Fionn McCall, also known as Fionn McCool. Fionn McCool is most famous in Irish mythology for creating the Giant's Causeway, but, it, but is also famous for catching the Salmon of Knowledge and creating the Isle of Man. Despite the modern popularity of the name, nobody in 1901 had the name. The only one person in 1911 had the name. Derivatives and alternative versions of the name are Finn, Finnegan, Fionn and Fionn. In the 1901 census, there was 11 people named Finn. There was 28 in the 1911 census. There is two people with the name Finnegan in the 1911 census. We will finish out our discussion with the name Oshin. Oshin is ranked as the 11th most popular name in 2017, according to the Central Statistics Offices. Oshin means deer or fawn. Oshin was a famous figure in Celtic mythology, being a famous poet and son of Fionn McCool. Oshin is most notable for his appearance in the story Oshin and Tiernan Og, one of the most famous Irish folk stories where Oshin goes to Tiernan Og, a land where he does not age. Despite the modern popularity of the name, there is only one person by the name of Oshin in the 1901 census and two people by the name Oshin in the 1911 census. There only exists a single known variant of Oshin, that being an anglicized version, Oshin. Back to you, Nenek. To conclude the show, we have Maeve. Uh, boys names such as Jack only began becoming popular around the 1911 census. Can you tell me a bit about boys names in Ireland that experienced a rise in popularity in the 10 years between the 1901 and 1911 census? Between the years of 1901 and 1911, boys names in Ireland such as Desmond, Jack, Seamus and Brendan have experienced periods of popularity and periods in which they have become less popular. The Irish census results between the years of 1901 and 1911 showcase a number of boys' names such as these that appear in the earlier census and grow significantly over the next 10 years to be seen more frequently in the findings of the 1911 census. These boys' names only began becoming popular as Irish people branched out from traditional names used in 1901, such as John. Desmond is one of the names that experienced a period of growth. The name Desmond has its origins in early Ireland. There is few variations of this name, bar the shortened name of Des. The name Desmond comes from the Irish surname of Desmond, and it is an anglicised interpretation of the Gaelic word Desmuna Sept, which means descendant of South Munster. Sept or clan was a term used to categorise a collective of people whose immediate ancestry all bore the same surname to a territory or region. In the case of Desmond, the name has strong ties to Cork in the south of Munster. In the 12th century, during the rule of Ireland by the Earls, the House of Fitzgerald's dominant southern branch was the Earl of Desmond. In the 1901 Irish census, 99 people were recorded as having Desmond as their name, with the majority of these being found in Dublin, with a notable presence also in South Munster in the counties of Cork and Limerick. By 1911, the name had increased in popularity by 313 people. Notable people with the name Desmond include Desmond Doss, who was a famed combat medic who refused to train in firearms. Moving on, the name Jack is also a name that rose to popularity in the 1911 census. Jack is a name that is most commonly given in English-speaking world, but has an ambiguous origin. Its origins are commonly tied to the Middle England and France where Jack is an indirect diminutive form of John and possibly Jacks, which is the French, French form of Jacob or James. The meaning behind the name Jack translates to God is gracious, as Keen earlier stated. Over the course of the 19th and 20th century, Jack became more common in name registration across many English speaking countries, such as the US, England, Australia, and Ireland. In the 1901 census, the number of Irish citizens named Jack numbered 964 people, and this number increased to 1,667 by 1911. The name Jack has only become more popular since then, and according to the Central Statistic Office, Jack ranked the most popular boy's name in Ireland in 2019. The name has a rich presence in folklore, the English language, and modern media. Moving along, another name that rose to fame in 1911 was Seamus. The boy's name Seamus is the Irish translation of the English name James. As previously stated by Keane, it translates to supplanter and he who grabs the heel. 
The name grew considerably between the years of 1901 and 1911, growing from six small boys named Seamus in 1901 to over 336 people registered with the name by 1911. James, which is the name Seamus derived from, got its name from the Hebrew translation of Jacob. And while James is the more popular two variations, around 1911, the Irish translation in Seamus became become more popular in its own right, as people looked for a unique version of James that Seamus provided. The name has only grown in popularity, with famed Nobel Prize poet Seamus Heaney carrying the name. Lastly, Brendan is also a name that rose to popularity in 1911, between the period of 1901 and 1911. The name Brendan appeared 52 times in the 1901 census and grew to over 366 boys by 1911. The origins of Seamus of Brendan lie in England as the name is English translation of a simplification of the old Irish name of Brennan. The Irish variation of Brendan has an additional A after the E but is less popularly used in Ireland. The root of all these variations of Brendan come from the Welsh name Brahim which translated directly to king or prince. The Latin name Brendonis has also impacted on the name Brendan and its popularity in various forms. During the 1900s, the English variation of Brendan was favored over the Irish name. However, it only began becoming more popular around the 1911 census. The simple English variation name continues to be the, name, the way the name is spelled today, rather than the Irish with St. Brendan of Clonfersh, one of the many saints in Ireland, representing the name. I will now pass back to Nicholas. Thank you all for that very interesting show. The development of names and how they've progressed through time is a very interesting topic to investigate. I particularly found it fascinating how the names Dennis and Donica have seemingly shifted in terms of popularity in modern times. Um, and I think that about wraps us up for today's show. I'd like to thank our four guests, Lucas, Keen, Laura and Maeve, for being here today representing the Genealogy Wolves. This show will be repeated on Sunday, Sunday on Radio Cork Abashkin, and next week we'll be back with another fascinating genealogy radio show. Did you ever stop and wonder if you could be related to everyone with your last name? Just think if you're a Lincoln, how you'd be congratulated if Honest Abe were someone you could claim. To clear up any mystery, just check your family history. Genealogy is the name of the game. Now some ancestors you'll find you want to hide. But most of them will fill your heart with pride. Oh, your family, your family tree, your family tree. Check your genealogy, find who was who and how who came to be. Your family, 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 family tree. Did you ever stop and wonder if you could be related to everyone with your last name? Just think if you're a Lincoln, how you'd be congratulated if Honest Abe were someone you could claim. To clear up any mystery, just check your family history. Genealogy is the name of the game. Now some ancestors you'll find you want to hide. But most of them will fill your heart with pride. Oh, your family, your family tree, tree, your family tree. Check your genealogy, find who was who and how who came to be. Your family, 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 family. Welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. Today we have a follow-up from last week's show, another fascinating show on rare names in Irish history and common names. Um, I'd like to pass you over to Lucas. Thank you, Nick. I'll be speaking first on some naming conventions through Irish history. The allure of a brilliant princess from a beautiful and often foreign land has been a driving force for Irish girls' names for hundreds of years. Such women in Irish mythology include Aoife, 
warrior queen of Scotland, Neave, the mystic immortal princess. In fact, the nation of Scotland was only so called after an Irish tribe, the Scotty, conquered the native Picts. This Irish tribe took their name from their legendary first queen, Scotia, an Egyptian princess. This legend is recorded in the medieval manuscript, the Scotty Chronicon. In fact, the name of this nation, Aaron, comes from a queen and a god of the earth, Eru, according to the Laur, Gabla, and the Heron. Whether after a mighty queen like Queen Maeve of Connacht, or a determined but tragic hero like Grania of myth, and indeed Grania Whale, all these women had agency and fought for what they wanted in love and war. And this tendency to name girls with foreign names to romanticize may be why there's hundreds of girls named Hilda and Hulda even, when Norse boys' names, as we saw last episode, faded away rather fast. The Normans who settled Ireland often came from Wales and brought over some Welsh spellings as well as French. In 1911, Dublin, we found a Donna Margaret Costello, 23. Donna being a Welsh name and Costello being a Norman name. We know that names get passed down through the family, so she may have had a parallel back in the 1100s. The Normans also brought the French names and some others like Alison, Alice and Joyce. They were French and Kate, which was Greek, but brought over by the Normans. In the 1800s and especially 1900s, during the Gaelic revival amidst the zeitgeist of Celtic Renaissance and a revolutionary zeal, these old Celtic names came back and new names inspired by Irish culture arose as well. The popularity of Searsha and Ashling came from this time. Uh, Kian. So some of the most popular names in the 1911 census were based off names from the Bible and popular saints. Can you please tell me a little about that and some of these names? The name Mary comes from the Latin form of the New Testament Greek names, Miriam and Maria. It derives from a few Hebrew words. The first word means sea of bitterness. The second word means rebelliousness. And the third means wished for a child. In the New Testament, the name was most importantly born by Mary, the mother of Jesus, who conceived the baby Jesus while remaining a virgin. The name was also born by Mary Magdalene, who Jesus cured of demons. She became an avid follower and witnessed his crucifixion and resurrection. The name became really popular in Christian countries thanks to the Virgin Mary. The name was considered sacred in Ireland and only became popular in Ireland in the late 10th and early 11th centuries. By the 1911 census, Mary was the most popular women's name in Ireland, with 16% of all Irish women bearing the name. Mary was also the most popular women's name in America until 1946. Famous Marys include former Queen of England, Bloody Mary, Mary, Queen of Scots, and Mary Poppins. The name has also been borne by two former presidents of Ireland, Mary Robinson and Mary McAleese. The name Bridget is the anglicized version of the Irish name Brigid. It means exalted one. In Irish mythology, Bridget was the goddess of fire, poetry and wisdom and the daughter of the god Dagda. Bridget has been born by one of our patron saints, Saint Bridget, who founded a monastery in County Kildare and was called Mother of the Gales. The name was considered sacred in Ireland until the 1600s. In Irish tradition, if the first child was a girl, Families would often name her Bridget after St. Bridget so she could lead the family. By 1911, 
Bridget was the second most common female name in Ireland, comprising 7.9% of the total female population. Other Irish abbreviations of the name Bridget include Breed and Breda. The name Margaret comes from the Persian word for pearl, which is Margarita in, the, in, in French. And in the early years, the word Margarita was Latinized in France to Marguerite, which in turn became Margaret in the English speaking world. The name Margaret is very popular among Christians due to martyred St. Margaret of the fourth century. Legends tell of St. Margaret escaping a dragon, making her very popular during medieval times. St. Margaret is also the patron saint of childbirth and expectant mothers. Margaret was the most popular name in Britain for years and the third most popular name in Ireland during the 1911 census. Margaret was always associated with being a rich and classic name, often used for queens and saints. Like for example, Queen Elizabeth II's sister, Princess Margaret. It was also the name of the first ever female British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. The short abbreviation of the name is Maggie and Meg. In French, Marguerite is another word for Daisy making Daisy a short form of Margaret. Other variations include the German name Margot, the shortened version Greta, and names such as Peggy and Rita. The Irish abbreviation of Margaret is Maraid. Ellen, as a name, has two very conflicting stories of origin. The first being that the name Ellen is of English origin, meaning bright or shining light. The name is an Old English form of Helen. The name Helen stems from the Greek name Helena. This was the name of the mother of Constantine the Great, a devout Christian who was credited with founding the True Cross. It was a popular name in Britain due to this legend, even though it has no historical basis, that she was born in Britain. Helen was always more common in medieval England, however, with the Renaissance name, the name Helen slowly began to replace Ellen. The, po the, the second possible origin of Ellen is that it comes from a Greek biblical name, Elizabeth, a derivative of the Hebrew name, Elisheba. Translated from Hebrew, the El means God of Israel and the Shiva translates as Oath. Thus the name Ellen is said to mean, my God is an Oath. This name and its variants are spread all over the world. The name appears in the Old Testament as the name of Aaron's wife, Elisheva, and in the New Testament as the name of the wife of the priest, Zechariah, and mother of John the Baptist. Which story is true? I don't know. Possibly both origins of the name Ellen carry truth. However, it is impossible to know for sure. Thank you, Kian. Now, Connor, as discussed last week, names stereotypically Irish, Oren and Donacha, and as such, did not appear in the 1901 and 1911 census, but have grown in popularity in modern times. What would you, what have you found in terms of girls' names that follow this same pattern? Quiva, Cloda, Kayla, Ashling. Durval and Deirdre are examples of Irish names which are either not present on the 1901 and 1911 census or are only present in very small numbers. First, we'll start with the name Quiva. Quiva comes from Gaelic and Scottish origins. The name comes from the famous name Kevin, which in Irish is Kevin. Quiva means beautiful, dear, or noble. According to the, tw to the 2019 Central Statistics Office, Quiva is the 17th most common female name given to babies as of, as of 2019, which is a far cry from over 100 years ago, as in both 1901 and 1911, the name didn't even exist. A common variant of the name comes from the English version Kiva. Next, we'll move on to the name Cloda. Cloda is a name that comes from Irish origin. 
While it is quite popular in modern times, ranking number 50 in terms of the top female baby names, according to the CSO in 2019. The name Clota gained its popularity both from the River Clota, which is situated in County Waterford, but also came from, comes from the famous Lady Clota Beresford, who was an Anglo-Irish philanthropist, writer, and aristocrat. Lady Clota Beresford wrote two famous books, the most famous of which was on raising awareness for homelessness, and she tried to raise money with the profits of the book to tackle homelessness. Another common name in modern, in modern Ireland is Saoirse. One of the most famous Saoirse's in the world is that of esteemed Hollywood actress Saoirse Ronan. Saoirse Ronan is one of the main reasons for the name Saoirse becoming more common amongst different cultures. Saoirse is an Irish word which, when translated, can mean freedom or liberty. When researching the 1901 and 1911 census, there was no account of the name Saoirse, as it didn't come into existence until the 1920s. However, in the 1911 census, there is 120 people with the name uh, Squ Sorcha, which was more common than the Irish variation around this time. The name Saoirse was first adopted during the War of Independence and Ireland's fight for freedom, hence the definition. According to the CSO statistics in 2019, Saoirse was the 23rd most popular female baby name in Ireland, which is a far cry difference from not existing 100 years ago. Ashing is a name that first came into use in the 20th century. The name was originally used in poems in the 18th and 19th century, and means dream, vision, or apparition. The name Ashling reaches peak popularity in 1998, ranking as the 21st most popular girl's name in Ireland, according to the CSO. The name, st as stated before, only came into usage in the 20th century, and as such, there exists nobody on the 1901 or 1911 census using the name Ashling, with only one person in the 1911 census using the variant Ashlin, spelled with two N's. No variants of the name Ashling are Ashlin spelled with one or two N's. Durville, originally Durville, comes from Irish Dur, meaning daughter, and the Irish Phil, meaning poet. The name Durville first came into usage around the 1960s, but unfortunately has never received much popularity for unknown reasons. Many years the name has less than three people given the name, meaning for that, meaning for that for many years there simply exists no data for the popularity of the name on the Central Statistics Office. The highest popularity of the name as variants ever got was ranked 236 in 1966. Known variants of Durville are, are Durvla, Durvla, and Durvilla. In the 1901 and 1911 census, there exists nobody with the name Durville or any of its variants. Deirdre is the name of a figure in Celtic mythology. The story of Deirdre, also known as Deirdre of the Sars, is a classic Irish tragedy that follows the story of Deirdre and her ultimate destruction. The original story has been adapted by many writers throughout the, throughout the ages, including William Butler Yeats. The name remained consistently popular from 1964 to 1997, and was seventh most popular girl's name in 1966 and 1973, according to the CSO. There exists only one known variant, variant of the name, that being Deidre, which is far less popular than Deirdre. In the 1901 and 1911 census, there exists a single instance of Deirdre in 1901 and seven instances of the name in 1911, with nobody by the name Deirdre, Deirdre being present in either 1901 or 1911. Thank you, Connor. Now, Oshin. Girls naming patterns experience rapid change between those years of 1901 and 1911. Can you tell me some examples of girls' names that have grew rapidly between those years? Certainly. Girls' naming patterns between 1901 and 1911 featured a growth in popularity in girls' names such as Eileen, Sarah, and Josephine, as Irish people began to branch out from the names they had restricted themselves with previously. In the 10 years between the two censuses, Names such as these grew rapidly to appear far more frequently in the results of these surveys. First is Eileen. Eileen is a name common today in both Ireland and England, yet the name only began becoming popular in the 1911 census, indicating that there were, in the 10 years that had passed since the 1901 and 1911 census, the name grew in popularity. The name Eileen is of Gaelic and Scottish descent. The meaning of the name is bright, shining one, indicating someone with this name is quite unique and special. Eileen is known as the anglicised form of the Irish name Eileen. 
It has many variations of the name in the English language, such as Aileen and Aline. The name Aileen is thought to be the Irish version of the name Helen. The number of women with the name Aileen was recorded at over 1,944 in the 1901 census. This number grew rapidly uh, to 5,962 people with the name in both findings uh, in the findings of the 1911 census. Uh, the name is one that has continued to be present in both Irish and English society, with the Irish architect Eileen Gray bearing the name. Second is Kathleen, which also grew in popularity between the 1901 and 1911 censuses. The name Kathleen is the anglicised name of Caitlin, an Irish variation. The name has various meanings, one of them being that Kathleen translates to pure and clear. Kathleen was the eighth most popular name in Ireland in the 1911 census with 23,159 girls using the name. This number was a rapid growth from the 10,223 girls which held the name in the 1901 census. The name Kathleen and its many variations derives from the orig uh, originally from the Greek name Akathrin. Uh, besides the Irish name Caitlin, alternative is also Kathleen, spelt with a C in the place of a K, and Catherine, which is the old French form that Caitlin took uh, Kathleen took inspiration from. Authors such as the American author Kathleen Windsor and the famed British author J.K. Rowling, whose real name is Joanne Kathleen, um, shared this beautiful name today. Moving on, we will discuss the name Josephine. Josephine is the feminine form of the Hebrew name Joseph, which originated in France. Josephine is primarily a diminutive form of the French name Josephé, which means Jehovah. Uh, it became popular in the 1800s thanks to the high profile of Josephine de Bernays, which the wife, which is the wife of the Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. There are many different interpretations of Josephine across many different languages. For example, in Spanish, Josephine is Josefina, and other alternative uh, diminutive spellings include Jojo, Fifi, and Josie. The name is common among European royalty, with the Queen of Sweden, uh, Josephine of Luxembourg being one of many to use the name. In the 1901 census, the number of women using the name was 6,312. This skyrocketed to 12,394 in the findings of the 1911 census. The name grew improperly, however, but in modern day Ireland, it has seems to have dramatically dropped in popularity with only 10 girls in 2014 being named Josephine, according to the CSO. The name continues to be recognized, however, in many popular fictional shows with characters such as Josephine Potter in Dawson's Creek novel and novel characters such as Josephine Joe March in the well-known Little Women, in addition to prominent figures in society, such as Josephine Clay Ford, Henry Ford's granddaughter, using the name. Lastly, we will finish with the unique name Sarah. The name Sarah featured a growth in popularity between 1901 and 1911. Sarah is the female name found in many corners of the world from the Europe to the Americas and the Middle East. It is a prominent name of the Abrahamic religions with heavy ties to Jewish and Christian communities. There are many different interpretations of the name in language and culture. In the Old Testament of the Bible, the Hebrew Bible and the Quran, Sarah refers to Sarah, wife of Abraham. In Arabic, Sarah means joy and delight, while in Hebrew and Persian, it means woman of high ranking, such as a princess. In modern Hebrew, Sarah, uh, the diminutive form of Sarah, translates to minister. In the 1901 census, the name Sarah was familiar in Ireland, with 2,521 girls using the name at the time the 1901 census results were given. However, this name grew rapidly uh, more popular in the 10 years that occurred between the two censuses, with 3,125 girls being named uh, Sarah in the 1911 census findings. During the era of Nazi Germany, male and female Jews were required to identify themselves with names that were distinctly Jewish to separate themselves from the rest of the German population. Male Jews were required to adopt the male Jewish name Israel and females were to adopt the name Sarah. Many notable figures have carried the name and its common derivative Sarah with people such as the former governor of Alaska, Sarah Palin and comedian Sarah Silverman adopting the name. Thank you, Kian. That's all for this episode. If you'd like to see it again or see the first part, you can check it out at clansandsurnames.com.
Did you ever stop and wonder if you could be related to everyone with your last name? Just think if you're a Lincoln, how you'd be congratulated if Honest Abe were someone you could claim. To clear up any mystery, just check your family history. Genealogy is the name of the game. Now some ancestors you'll find you want to hide. But most of them will fill your heart with pride. Oh, your family, your family tree, tree, your family tree. Check your genealogy. Find who was who and how who came to be. Oh, your family, 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 family tree.